you through Jesus. Amen. Meredith, can you come up here, please? Right here. Meredith uh, sent me something she got on the email, and I thought it was preachable, so I'm making her help me do this. This is just an introduction to our sermon. But it's a comparison of Jesus versus Santa. <coughs> Jesus is better than Santa. Santa lives in the North Pole. Jesus is everywhere. Santa rides in the sleigh. Jesus rides on the wind and walks on the water. Santa comes but once a year. Jesus is an ever-present help. Jesus fills our stockings with goodies. Santa. Santa. <laughs> Jesus supplies all your needs. Santa comes down your chimney and Uninvited. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesus stands at your door and knocks and then enters your heart. You have to stand in line to see Santa. Jesus is as close as the mention of his name. Santa lets you sit on his lap. Jesus lets you rest in his arms. Santa doesn't know your name. All he can say is, hey little boy or girl, what's your name? Jesus knew your name before we, before we did. Not only does he know our name, he knows our address too. He knows our history and future, and he even knows how many hairs are on our heads. Santa has a belly like a bowl full of jelly. Jesus has a heart full of love. All Santa can offer is a ho, ho, ho. Jesus offers help, help and hope. Santa says, you better not cry. Jesus says, cast all your cares on me, for I care about you. Santa little, little helpers make toys. Jesus makes new life, mends wounded hearts, repairs broken homes, and builds mansions. Santa may make you chuckle, but... Jesus gives you joy that is your strength. While Santa puts gifts under the tree. Jesus became our gift and died on the tree. It wasn't too bad, was it? <laughs> Another connection to Santa is that maybe you might get the question, what do you need from a loved one who's coming up with a Christmas shopping list? What, do you, what should I buy you? What do you need? You've gone to these uh, gatherings now, and uh, during the Christmas season, I think the question, how are you doing, also gets asked. <clears throat> how are you doing? It's a good question. There's nothing wrong with the question. But, uh, and you can go fairly deep with that, or you can be fairly surface with it. How are you doing? But really, isn't the question that uh, you and I are to be pondering Maybe not always asking all the time, but certainly pondering in our life is, what do you need? What do you need? In our gathering at St. Stephanus on any Sunday, there may be this going on in our homes. The death of a sister. Figuring out a fearful illness. Looking forward to a new child or experiencing new motherhood. Having relatives come over, which can be good or bad. Unemployment, the fear of unemployment, foreclosure. A last Christmas of some sort. Hoping mom and dad are finally going to get along. Maybe the family carries guilt uh, over a secret that everybody knows or maybe a few members of the family knows. Perhaps the household is empty. The child is off to the other parent. <laughs> Or maybe the spouse has died. Or maybe the child is now in Iraq. 
and the kids are off to college. What do you need? What do you need? Martin Luther said, we are all beggars. One of his last words on his deathbed, we are really just beggars, aren't we? What do you need? How are you doing? How about what do you need? What do you need as I go to the Mall of America? No. What do you need? Really? To the one who is experiencing grief, a hope of a blessed reunion. To the one struggling with fearful illness, a certain knowledge that it is going to be okay, no matter what the outcome. To the one raising a new child in this world, just the, the hope that this world is still going to be here, and that there will be a certain civility that this child can grow into a decent and ordered world, still ruled by God. To relatives coming over, peace and love expressed. To those that struggling with unemployment or financial uncertainty, hope, being able to see beyond the next six months maybe a larger picture. To those experiencing the last Christmas, to know that life is not over. To mom and those kids who just want mom and dad to get along. Peace at home. For those struggling with guilt, and maybe the guilt over a certain secret in the home, to know that even if the secret gets out, forgiveness can happen. And there could be new beginnings. And to those feeling awfully empty, the house is really lonely, to know they're included. Those are our needs, aren't they? I'd like you to imagine that on Christmas Day, this is Christmas Day. Christmas Eve, we celebrated the, uh, uh, the starry sky, the glory shining around, the angels proclaiming a message, the heavenly choir, the story told to the shepherds, the shepherds running to the manger, the story being told there, <clears throat> the birth. But now Mary is tired, maybe taking a nap. The shepherds have all gone home. And Joseph is just finally getting his wits about him. But there's a certain peace now on this day around the manger. And I'd like to bring you to that place, that place of, of just a, a place of peace, of rest, of relaxation, of letting God be God. Having wholeness and shalom, the peace of God, rest upon you. All that you've needed has been met in this Christ child, as the writer put of a, 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 a way in a major puts it. All our fears, all our hopes and dreams are met in thee tonight. Or as we say in Joy to the World, <clears throat> No more let sin and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, far as the curse is found. Rest in the blessing of the great gift that is ours, Jesus our Lord. Rest with Mary and Joseph. Have peace. It is what you need. Did you hear what the angel said? That this is good news. A Savior has been born. And that God's peace now rests upon you 
whom God favors, and you live in the favor of God, be favored, relax, be at peace. Have this wholeness. You are favored. God loves you. And this little child will die for your sins. He will come again. You are his. You are his brother and your, his sister. You share a same heavenly father. 